Right then guys, welcome back. This time it is the 34 inch QD OLED 21 by 9 aspect ratio, 175 hertz. It is a 1800R curve and it is the Avenia 34 ultra wide. Okay, you've seen the unboxing, you've seen what comes in the box, you've seen the gameplay footage. Now, this got um, positives and negatives about this monitor. Now, what I will say for the negatives, so there is more positives and negatives, but one is this anti-refresh feature. I don't know what it is. It just kept pop, popping up. And if you did not, for some reason, I could not get it in the settings, in the interface. It does not show anything about this feature. To turn off the monitor you have to keep your finger pressed directly in the middle on the nipple and if you don't get it directly on the, in the middle it will automatically go to refresh mode which, which does it at certain points of the day I understand OLED it does suffer with burning or th those kind of issues I know that that's from watching other videos but it was really annoying especially during gameplay it would just go off the monitor go completely off that one I don't like that's one feature of this monitor that annoyed the hell out of me 
and I don't want to upset anyone, but that feature really did annoy me. Overall, the screen, as you can see, these black bars, but here, which is the screen not being directly toward the bezel. Now, for an odd pound monitor, you would expect the bezel to have none of these black lines. What year is it? It looks like 2010. When you've got the Samsung phones and they've got those massive black bars on the top. No. For an odd pound monitor, these shouldn't be there. They should be right up towards the overall bezel and it should be nice and clean. That's another one. Then there's this other bezel at the bottom by here, which has got the Avenia and then it's got the Philips logo by here and then the white dot, uh, LED. Now, in between these this mont the, this little gap by here there's gaps there's little 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 gaps in between that for some reason i don't know why it just looks awful and for over 1100 pound you should expect it to look or at least feel premium now yes the monitor does feel premium the overall putting it on its stand putting it together actually using it is a very good experience my first OLED monitor and I will say the colours, the contrast are so vibrant. The blacks were lovely, they were oh, watching something, pure blacks, it was gorgeous. Now it does have HDR 400 which isn't really HDR, it's just a certification. Uh, it has got a lot of USB ports as you saw in the unboxing part. Now it has a very good uh, RGB effect at the back which I have shown it on one of the other Philips monitors I had I believe it was the momentum monitor from Philips it had this like really cool glow uh, like L individual LEDs at the back and I'll make sure to see if I can put a part of the video which you don't see and that part really cool but I really wish that they could be able to sync up to you your computer or your console wish that was an option overall the experience was brilliant it was fantastic the OLED was stunning it's a very nice premium monitor but of course the negatives do weigh on the positives because you're spending over 1100 pound that is god awfully expensive for a monitor and if you're going to pick a monitor that you want it's got to be something that has got no problem it's got to be a dream monitor I personally, myself, would not spend £1,100 on this. I'm sorry, as much as I loved using it, I would not spend the money on it. I just wouldn't. It, to be honest, I'd rather my perfect monitor. Zero bezels, just flat screen, uh, nice curvature, lovely. But, the curvature in this monitor, really, once you get from 16, uh, 16, 16.9 aspect ratio, 16.9, once you go from that aspect ratio to 21.9, there is a bit of a di there is a difference. Your eggs, your your eyes start going oval, and that is because of the way it's a lot longer as an ultra wide. Now it does take a day or so to get used to that, but I didn't find any problems. To be fair, it's not the first uh, ultra wide I've had. Now overall, what are my overall thoughts? Look. It's got some negatives. It's a absolute stunning monitor. The overall design, the overall functions of the monitor is absolutely breathtaking. But it does have flaws. And as much as I love working with Philips as well as AOC, the flaws are something I would not buy. Me, that's me personally. It's subjective to everyone. It's what you're willing to spend your money on. I will say that the features for this are for gaming. The overall screen is fantastic. It looks beautiful. The overall design is stunning. It's white. It looks very premium. But it also has negatives. Look. Me personally wouldn't buy it. But that's me. If that's up to you. I will leave a link in the bottom below. And you can guys can go check it out for yourself. But overall from my experience with Monta. They are the only three things I did not like. So. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and Richard from Welshy Tech will be bringing more videos soon. So, goodbye.